Hi, my name's Ruan and this is my channel, The Yorkshire Sew Girl. I'm back today to talk about my collaboration with the lovely Tamlin from Sew on the Tyne and Rachel from Stitched Up. If you remember a short while ago, we came on and did a bit of an introductory vlog. And we are making, the three of us, these bad boys. So the Closet Core Mylon Sweatshirt and the Plateau Joggers. Now, I know I've got ridiculously outrageous lipstick on. It's as close as I could get to red. <laughs> I know in my introductory vlog, I mentioned about the lipstick. It kind of scared me a little bit. A little bit like the Joker. Now, someone dared me to wear bright red lipstick while I did my reveal vlog. But I don't have any bright red lipsticks. This is as good as I've got. So yes, I'm sat here in my lounge where ridiculously with outrageously bright lipstick on but you know just go with it go with it people so yeah so we um did an introductory video just to talk through the fact that the three of us were going to sample these two patterns and we all were very kindly offered from the lovely juliet first fabrics to pick some fabric while we were there which was gifted to us just to kind of road test it and see what it was like um, Tamlin had already messaged me and um, Rachel and said, oh my lord, this fabric is absolutely stunning that's come into the shop. And we were like, ooh. And then when we got there and we felt it and saw it, we understood why she was raving so much about it. And then we all decided that we were going to do a bit of a collab with it. So we all decided to colour block because it's got lots of opportunities for colour blocking. And we all decided on two different coloured fabrics. Now, I won't tell you what the other ladies have got. I'll probably throw the odd quick photo in so you will see along the way a little hint. But I'll let you go over to their vlog so that you can see a little bit more detail. And we obviously all of these individually are going to do reviews as well of these two patterns. So it'd be interesting to see how each of us found it. Shall we start off with a fabric? So these are the two colours that I chose. I know, I think I scared people. <laughs> I actually... This will end up being my thumbnail. I can, I just know YouTube is going to pick this moment out as my thumbnail. Um, yes, we could choose two different fabrics. And when we went into the shop, Rachel knew straight away what she was going to get. And I saw these two colours together and I quite like opposite colours of the colour spectrum. Um, and it's kind of in between this one. Um, and I just fell in love with the colours of it. Um, and Tamlin was kind of like, I'm sorry, what? Wait a minute. I had you down for the pinks and purples, she said, which was kind of what I wanted. But I was thinking, I'll let Ruan choose first because she's that kind of gal. Um, so she was suited <laughs> when I picked out something that wasn't what she thought. And I, I had a lot of response from you guys saying, I can't believe you didn't pick the pink. And I, I kind of can't believe I didn't either. But I'm so happy with my choice. So, yes, I'm really, really happy with them. So this fabric is a brushed back viscose French terry. Say that ten times. Um, and it's it's one of the nicest fabrics ever, is all I'm going to say. It's quite lightweight. Now, the grammage of it is actually 220 grams per square metre. But because of the viscose content of it, it's very, very drapey. So can you see the drape on this? It's just, it's so nice on your skin because it's brushed back. Like I said in my vlog before, shall I show you this? Hello. Well, you can see that I use my um, rainbow coloured overlocking thread as well. Um, because it's brushed back, it's just, it's just gorgeous on the body. Now, I think I mentioned in my other vlog as well that I'm not a massive fan of French Terry. I love the structure of it. I love the designs of it, but I'm not that keen on the loop back. I've just had my nails done for my holiday. Did I tell you I'm going on holiday? <laughs> um, so they're a little bit outrageous for now. I wouldn't normally have outrageous nails like this, but I am going on my holiday. So it's got to be done, hasn't it? Sipping a cocktail in the sunshine. Anyway, I'm getting distracted already. So yeah, it is just, it's beautiful. That's all I can say. It's 150 centimetres wide as well, so you've got plenty in it. It's 98% viscose and 2% elastane, so there's plenty of stretch in it though. I think it's got 65% stretch width ways 
and 35% stretch lengthways. And it's £11.95 a metre, which I think is awesome. Now, what you need to know about this fabric is it's probably a little bit more difficult to work with than a structured jersey. Does that make sense? Um, because of the drape and the viscose in it. But as you know, I'm a massive fan of viscose in my woven fabric love of everything. So this for me is just perfect. But when you're sewing it, um, it is a bit more tricky than if you were using a stable sweatshirting type fabric that was a lot thicker and doesn't move as much because it's got so much flexibility to the fabric. But as a loungewear set, <laughs> just amazing. In fact, the more I think about it as well, the more I wouldn't mind making some other kind of loungewear that's that's like maybe, you know, a big cowl or roll neck sweater that you'd just love to just pop on you know, when you get home from work that looks smart, but is actually outrageously loungewear as well. You know, like secret pyjama type things. So yeah, it comes in loads of different colours. I think it originally came in seven colours, but now they've added black and cream. And if you see those two together, go and have a look online. Anyway, they're beautiful. I'm, I'm kind of thinking that cream, although it'd be a nightmare for getting dirty, would just look so luxe. You know what I'm saying, don't you? And all I keep thinking about is like a drop shoulder kind of jumper with a big neck. Mm. So yeah, I can highly recommend this fabric. It's just delicious. So yeah, so the two colours I chose were the mustard colour and navy. I had some people talk to me as well in the comments to say that these were the colours from their uni days as well in America. So they were like, oh, that they were they were our colours. These were our, is it house colours? I can't remember. I'm really sorry if I've got that wrong because we don't have anything like that in the UK. But anyway, so I'm done. I will pop some pictures in, but just I've worn them today so you can have a look. So this is the sweater. So I've gone for the standard one that just has um, a plain hemband and a plain neck. And then this, let me show you my bum. <laughs> This is the back. So I have done, um, these are my joggers as well. So there's just the accent of mustard here and there. So quite a bit of mustard here. And I wanted it to contrast on here. I've got it on the yo uh, on the bottom back piece there as well. I've got it on the band. And then ooh, I've got it actually on my cuffs as well. So. I'm really happy actually with the placement. I did also cut out some pockets. So let's talk about the joggers first. So these are they. Um, I've done this exact version here. So there's two different cuff types. There is one that has proper cuffs like this and then there's one that does an elasticate bottom. And then there's the shorts version as well. So I've done this version here. And on the back, there is the option for pockets as well. Let me get the instructions out because it'll have the... Um, line drawing here we go it gives you a better idea so you can do patch pockets as well now I did cut them out and I had enough fabric to do that but um, I was unsure if I wanted as much notice on my backside with it being bright mustardy yellow you know what I'm saying don't you so I, I skipped that but I might try that on my next one anyway but if you can see here the construction of these two garments is really interesting, how they've drafted the pattern. So I'm going to stand up just to show you what I mean. So this back piece here, if you look here, wraps round, look, all the way down here. So that you see a flash of that bit down here as well. Cute, isn't it? And then the bottom band spins round. You have to cut that into a couple of pieces. And then it's the same, you can't see it as well on this because there isn't the contrast colour, but this back piece here, look, comes all the way round and into here. So there is no seam going up here, which is quite unusual. This wraps its way round. So both patterns wrap round, which I thought was really interesting, actually. Very um, unusual. Um, it's a high-waisted jogger pant. Now, a few people uh, messaged me as well and said, why are you making that when you've got Hudson pants? Can you tell me what the difference is? 
there isn't that much difference. The difference is obviously that the back panel comes round to the front. I think the pockets on a Hudson are more detailed and more of a standout feature type of thing, but this is quite clever. And the only other thing that I could say there's a big difference on is the waist on these. So these are very high rise, very high rise. I mean, I'm sat and I could, <laughs> I could. <laughs> No, this is going to be my thumbnail, isn't it? I can get them right up to my boobs, which for loungewear is kind of nice. You know what I'm saying? So they're really high, really high rise. Um, the Hudsons are more like a mid rise, but there is a hack, I believe, on the Hudsons to make them high rise as well. And I like both just as much, actually. I think my body shape suits a mid rise more. However, these from a comfort point of view are just to die for. They are really, really nice. Okay. So let's talk body measurements. Now, body measurements, which is quite interesting. I very, very, very rarely am the same size across bust, waist, hips, or even across two measurements. I'm normally all over the place. I tend to go like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this pattern that I've got, and uh, I'm really apologetic here. I haven't actually researched this in advance, so I will put it along the bottom if I find out. Um, I'm not sure if this goes any higher than a size 20, if there's a larger bracket. In my mind, I think there is, but I didn't research that first. Naughty of me. So I will check that out afterwards, and then I'll put the details along the bottom here just so that you know. But the pattern that I've got is a size 0 to 20, which goes from a waist of uh, 24 inches up to 39 inches and a hip of 33 inches to 48 inches. Now, for reference, I'm a 37 waist and a 46 hip. OK, so they are actually in the same size bracket. I know. Unbelievable. So I came out as a size 18 on both um exactly 37 and 46 which is unbelievable now fabric requirements at one and a half meters wide shows that for the trousers you need two meters now i'll talk you through fabric it's a bit difficult because i'm making both of the patterns but i have three meters of the navy and three quarters of a meter of the mustard um and that's how i then had to try and work out how i could place everything I use pretty much everything other than I've got about 65 centimetres of the navy left. So I had just under four metres, but I pretty much used th just over three metres. And for the trousers, the only thing I changed on them was to increase the leg by three inches because I'm five foot nine. Forgot then for that. How tall am I? So I'm five foot nine and I wanted extra length. So I actually added three inches onto the bottom. I think I could have got away with less. So I've used just over three metres, but I reckon if I was to get three metres next time, I'd probably just about manage it. And don't forget, I also got the three quarters of a, a metre was in the mustard. If I was doing it all in one colour, I think it would be much more economical as well to work out all of your pattern pieces. And you might be able to get it out of a little smidge in less than three metres depending on your height, obviously. So that's where we were with that. So I did a size 18. I did exactly what my size 18 was because there was only... In fact, I don't know if it told you what the finished measurements are. Let me have a look. Oh, no, it does. So for the size 18, let me have a look. The waist is exactly 37 inches. So the finished garment measurements are the same as the body measurements, obviously, because you're going to put elastic in it. So you could go potentially a little bit smaller because there's a little bit of give in these. Here, look. So you could go a bit smaller if you want and then just take this in. It's totally up to you how you do it. But I'm really comfortable with the sizes that actually match my body measurements. I'm very happy with that. So, yeah, I was absolutely suited. And obviously, then you've got your elastic that goes in the middle. Um and in the leg, in the cuffs as well, if you choose to do that. But I didn't. I use an actual piece of the mustard to make my cuff. So let's see what I've got written in my little log. I'm 50-50 with this. Sometimes I'm really good with it and sometimes I'm dreadful. 
but I've not been too bad on this one. So I used um, Maraflex. So that's the, um, let me grab it for you. That's the Gutterman thread that stretches that people are all going on about. We're all going on about it because it's blooming great because we don't need to use a zigzag stitch. <laughs> It's honestly, I know we all go on about it and we all say this, but it really is a game changer. So I use Maraflex thread to sew all of mine up and then I finished quite a lot of it on my overlocker and then pressed it just to try and get it to lie flat. So if you see my neckline lies really, really flat. So let's see what I've got. Lovely sew, fabric, amazing. <laughs> Unusual pattern drafting, back leg becomes top of the front leg. I'm just laughing at myself. Sizing perfect. Unusual to be in the same size bracket. <laughs> Use my reflex. I did buttonholes for the drawstrings. So you can do grommets, I think, or buttonholes. I have not had much sex. <laughs> I don't know. I've not had much success. Not editing that out either. I've not had much success with grommets um lost my train of thought now i've not had much success with grommets i've got them in a couple of my page hoodies and um i'm doing something wrong because they've kind of torn through the fabric so tamlin said i need to get my prim pliers out because i've got some prim pliers and do that instead so that's what i'm going to try and do in future um but for now i thought you know what i'm just going to do buttonholes so i've just done buttonholes here look because i don't mind buttonholes they're all right for me and then obviously threaded through um some what is it what is it cord drawstring drawstring cord i just had this hang laying about so it's not the exact perfect match but hey i'm not bothered it's my loungewear and i don't want to be buying stuff if i don't need to because i want to try and use what i've got um, the only thing that was a little bit weird about this was the cuffs were my holsters on my legs for some reason. So I did a size 18, but yeah, the cuff piece was really, really big and I don't understand why. Um, from a, a body perspective, I don't know whether because I'm a size 18, they expect me to have really big ankles. I don't know. Or whether maybe because you're doing it in ribbing, it needed to be that big. But because I was using this, it's got so much flexibility to it. I don't know. But I got out my True Bias Hudson pants piece and put it up against it. And there was about, must have been three inches different. So I just cut off that length, that extra bit, and made it kind of the same size as my Hudson pants and used that instead. And there's still plenty of room around them. They're soft and ugh, just... I'm feeling them now. You don't know what I'm doing down here, but I'm feeling my cuffs. So, yeah. Bob on. Like I say, the length, I added three inches onto the length, but I don't really think I needed to add as much as that on. They'd have been absolutely fine, but I do like to have a long leg, you know. So, that was the um, pants. Let me flick to the next page in my book. Oh, that's... Let me flick forward to the other page. And then I made the wrong one. Wrong one, Ruan. The Mile End sweater. So this comes in three different versions as well. Let me move all this over. One second. So all neat and tidy in here, and now I'm messing it all up. So this comes in three different versions and I'll show you on the line drawing because it's a lot easier. So you've got this version here, which is the one that I've done, view A. View B has got this really nice tie here, look, that can cinch it in. And then view C is the hoodie version. So you've got like a little kangaroo pocket here and then it's like a V-neck that crosses over with the hood. So they're the three options. So I went for this one. Um, it was such a really quick and easy sew. I really enjoyed sewing this one up, actually. It has a few little details where you can put um, top stitching on. So if you look at the arm, it's very unusual. There's actually two darts in this arm, look. Now, I'm sure with a much more structured fabric, you'd probably see that a bit better, but 
it makes the arm piece curve in and then you've got the option to top stitch it and I was a bit worried with how fluid this fabric was but it's actually come out fine I've also top stitched you might be able to see it along here just to keep the yoke um, seam down and also around this neck band here just to keep it laid flat but yeah I really enjoyed making this up there was no issues with it whatsoever the only problem for me originally but it turned out quite well actually was that a lot of people said it came up short it is quite cropped I mean if you look at the picture on here it kind of comes just above the widest part of your hips. So I did know that. And obviously because I'm five foot nine as well, I was like, I really need to extend this. However, because I'd only got three quarters of a meter of this and I really wanted that back panel there to be the mustard. I didn't have enough fabric to fit everything else on. So I had to go with the length that it was. And do you know what? I'm really glad that I did. I know a lot of people have messaged me and said, just be careful, it comes up really short. Thank you so much because I do love it when people give me the heads up. However, I'm actually really okay with where it comes. So that's, can you see, it comes exactly really where it shows you on the picture. It comes just above my widest part, which is here. So for me, loungewear wise, that's fine. And I don't know if I'd want it <laughs> any lower. I'm not sure. I think I'm just, I quite like my jumpers cropped. So I think I quite like it like that. So I'm more than happy with it and I wouldn't lengthen it again. Not that I lengthened it this time, but I kind of wrote in my um, thing that I would lengthen it next time and I won't. So even better really, because then I don't use as much fabric because obviously when you're lengthening something, you're also having to use more fabric. So shall we talk sizes on this one as well? Again, this copy that I've got is size zero to 20. So this goes from a 31 bust to 46 and a waist of 24 to 39. Um, so yeah, I think there must be a, a larger size potentially because that 39 inches on a waist and isn't that size inclusive at all. Bearing in mind I'm 39 and I'm kind of a 14, 16 in UK sizes. And I think the average size of a woman is a 16. I'm not sure if that's still correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so yeah, it says that you need, um, it depends which view you're doing, but anything up to two metres, basically, depending on your size. Now, although I said on the joggers that I used the same size as my body measurements, I didn't on this one. And the reason for that is it's very oversized. So if I talk you through that, my body measurement, so I'm a 41 and a half on the bus. So I should have been between a 16 and 18, more the 18, but I only made a size 14 in the finished garment measurements because... Even sizing down nearly two sizes, I still had eight inches of ease. I mean, you can see I've no issue with the sizing on this whatsoever. It's not too small for me. And also I went for a 14 on the waist, even though my body measurements said an 18. So I sized down two times really. And even in the waist, it said three and a half inches of ease, but I think there's way more than that. But again, that be, could be because I've got such a fluid fabric. So don't forget, if, you, if you're going for something a lot more structured, um, some sort of fleece back sweatshirting that's quite heavy, you might just want to take that into consideration. But because this is really fluid and hangs off you, I think... Hey, oh. <laughs> just knocked everything on the floor, all my pattern pieces and everything. They've all just mixed together. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, um, from that perspective, spot on. So you can size down, no bother. I mean, I sized down twice. I could probably get away with another one. I did think about going down another size, but I just love this look. And for lounging around the house and also probably wearing something that's quite smart enough to really pop to the shops or whatever, if you really wanted to, I'm just more than happy with it. I really am. How many times can I stroke here? It's because it feels so beautiful, not only on the outside, but on the inside too. So let me see what I wrote about it. Enjoyed making it. <laughs> nice, de nice details on the arms. Top stitching. Might be easier on more structured fabric. Interesting pattern. The back piece becomes the front bottom edge piece. <laughs> so that's that bit that comes around here, look. Wanted to lengthen due to height, but the fabric quantity of the mustard prevented me. Glad I didn't lengthen now, as it's a perfect length. 
Now, the other thing I quickly mentioned at the beginning was the hem band here, look, is in two pieces. So this little bit here is cut separately and then you join it. Now, I'm normally quite good at joining things together, even on the overlocker. I pinned the absolute doodars out of this to make sure that it matched. And look, look what happened. That is not a perfect match. What's going on? And then look at this side. Neither is that one. But I think because they're both <laughs> slightly out, <laughs> it doesn't look that bad. Hey, can't be perfect to everything now. Just most things, like I said to my husband. <laughs> so yeah so that's my review of those two patterns i'll definitely make them again i'd love to try and make the hoodie pattern but i also really really like this option here with the tie when i saw one of the girls um that might have done that version um it was absolutely gorgeous so i'll be popping some pictures in now whilst i'm talking about all of that anyway so that you can kind of see what it looks like because it's okay for me to talk and just show you it really in a bit of a small environment, I wanted you to see some proper photos. And obviously when myself, Tammy and Rachel went to see the Knitting and Stitching show, we had a little bit of time on the last day we were there in the morning. So we decided to do some, um, some photos while we're all together. So yeah, let me know, have you made this before? Do you plan on making it? Do you like the fabric? Would you buy this fabric again? Have you experience of it? I know I want to cuddle myself all the time in it. And please do go over and check Tamlin from Sewn on the Tine and Rachel from Stitched Up to see what versions and colours they made theirs in. You'll have seen a little sneaky peek. But yeah, um, fantastic patterns. Would definitely recommend. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. And I've worn it about 100 gazillion times. Not that I like to um, exaggerate. Oh, and the other thing was I put some labels in. Look at that. How perfect are they? So these are Little Rosie Cheeks labels um, that she sent me. These were also gifted. She was so kind to put a pack in when I'd ordered some other packs. And it just says, I made this. And there was two of them in a pack. And I put one on here and one on the trousers as well. And look at the colours. I mean, I think they were meant to be. But yeah. So that's it. Hopefully myself, Rachel and Tamlin, no doubt we'll be doing another collab at some point. But it's been really good to do this with the ladies because obviously we're very close friends and we got to actually see each other all in our um, our outfits as well. So it's been brilliant fun. So yeah, head over onto their channels, have a look at what they've done and then let us know what you think. Take care, everybody. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.